Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good evening, Dr. Pradhan here. Welcome to NPTEL project on econometric modeling. So, today we will discuss co-integration technique. That is one of the interesting technique under time series modeling. So, in the last lectures, we have highlighted the basic framework of unit root problem. Because uh, without knowing unit root or you know tensionality issue, you cannot start co-integrations. Okay? So, unit root you, you must know the nature of the variable first that accordingly you have to apply the co-integrations. Okay? So, uh, so, first I will briefly highlight what is exactly unit root problems then we will come down to co-integrations. Then also uh, we will discuss the in the same times the causality issue. So, now what is First of all, the unit root problems. The unit root problem objective is to know the order of integrations where the variable will be stationary in nature. Is it order of 0, is it order of 1, or is it order of 2, or so on, so that the variables can be get to know uh, whether it is stationary in nature or non stationary in nature. So, depending upon the order of integration where the variables are stationary in nature, we can apply the co-integration and causality technique. So, without knowing the unit root problems or the stationary tissue, it is very, very difficult or it is not possible to enter to the co-integrations and causality test. Okay? So, as I have mentioned in the last lectures, there are many techniques available to check the tensionality problem. So, that two unit root problems. So, we start with the decupular test, then we uh, we discuss with augmented decupular test, KPSS, Phillips Perron test, NG test and so many things are there. So, basically in the last lecture, we have highlighted the concept of decupular test and augmented decupular test. So, I just briefly bring that these two techniques little bit, then we will enter to the co-integration techniques. So, decupular test, the standard form of decupular test is delta y t equal to alpha 0 plus uh, gamma y t minus 1 plus u t. Okay? So, here alpha is need to be significant. Okay. If alpha is significant, then the variable is stationarity, attend stationarity or it does not test attend the stationary. So, this is standard decupular test. So, co corresponding to decupular tests, the augmented decupular test statistic will be written like this delta y t equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 y t minus 1 plus summation you can say lambda i delta 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 y t minus i plus u t i equal to 1 to n. Okay. So, this is this is the standard tricks of this is a defeat test equation, this is decupular test equations. Okay. So, by the way, there are three forms of mathematical equation are available with decupular test and augmented decupular test. So, you know, we start with the delta y t equal to uh, lambda y t minus 1 plus u t, then uh, this is the starting point, means if we remove this one, then the starting point is this, this and this. Okay? So, then this is the starting point. 
and uh, uh, with respect to this particular model. So, we can add a drift component, we can add trend component and we can add both the components. Okay. So, I am not highlighting all these details here, because we have already discussed all these issues in the uh, in the last lectures. So, here if you will get the I means in this particular equation augmented decupolar uh, equations, because it is more advanced than decupolar uh, a simple decupolar test. So, beta 1 is the uh, important uh, um, you know parameters uh, by the way beta 1 should be statistically significant to know the stationarity levels okay, or order of integration through which you can say the variable is stationary in nature. Okay. Suppose, suppose this is integrated this is a beta 1 here alpha 0 so uh, means a null hypothesis is that beta 1 should equal to 0 against beta g, beta 1 uh, uh, sorry beta 1 not equal to 0 so that means beta 1 needs to be significant okay beta 1 needs to be significant if it is significant then we will call it is it is integrated of order 1 here so, okay integrated or order 1s suppose it is it is not stationary at this levels, then you go for second difference. Okay, it's called as a del square del, uh, uh, del square y t. Okay, double means we can write like this here del del y t or delta y square uh, delta square y t, which is equal to lambda i delta y t minus i. Okay, plus summation summation lambda i okay it's lambda is already there here so then you put it here this is alpha i y t minus i of course delta is there it's one second so i am writing here delta y t equal to alpha i delta y t minus i okay plus uh, uh, you know lambda i delta squares y t minus i i equal to 1 to n plus b t. Okay. Now, again this is very important here. Okay. Lambda, uh, in fact, this is uh, uh, this is uh, this particular item should be statistically significant. Okay. This should be statistically significant. Okay. So, depending upon the significance level, so we can check uh, whether the variable is stationary in nature or non stationary in nature. So, that means, uh, first you start with the simple uh, augmented decupolar uh, test then you see whether the variable is stationary attends stationary or not okay so now your objective is to know at what level the variable will stationary is it at the level data is it at the first difference is it at the second difference is it at the kth difference if it is the, uh, if it is stationary at the level data then it is integrated of order uh, 0 okay if it is uh, attends stationarity at the first difference level then you call, call it say it is order, order of integ order of integration is 1 similarly if it is uh, you know attend stationary at the kth or uh, kth difference levels then you can say that it is integrated of order k so that is that is you know an requirement uh, one of the most important requirement for co integration technique okay until unless you know the stationary tissue then you cannot move into the co integration technique so now you come down to the co integration structure so what is all together the co integrations you see the basic uh, definition co integration is that so we like to know what is the long run association between variables okay so long run association between variables you remember one thing very carefully in the time series modeling your sample size should be should be very 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 high okay otherwise it's very difficult to handle time series models where the lag is in the you know with you okay so the once you are using lag then obviously the sample size should be substantially high okay the moment sample size is substantially high then it is the question of long run analysis okay so when there is a long run analysis and when you are handling more variables at a time then you know what we have discussed in the case of simultaneous equation modeling and structural equation modeling so in a particular system once number of variables are very high or large in numbers then obviously there may be question of interdependence okay so, the question existence of interdependence in the time series setting 
is called as a cointegration. So, we like to know what is the long run association between these two variables, is there are they convergent or are they divergent. Okay. So, uh, that means, the cointegration will be come into the picture. So, cointegration represents the existence of long run equilibrium relationship between two or more variables. So, let us we start with the two variables at a time that means, cointegration technique is a multivariate technique. So, with one variable cointegration cannot be possible. So, we start with the two variables at least two variables like you know correlation or regressions. So, cointegration also starts with the you can say two variables together. So, okay. so it is not like that way like you know in the uh, time series modeling. So, we have y t, y t minus 1, y t minus 2. So, with one uh, that is univariate time series modeling with single variables you will create additional variables. So, uh, that is not the structure of cointegration. In the cointegration textures there should be two different variables or let us say y t and x t like this. So, y t and x t. So, we need to create here so y t minus 1, so y t minus 2 that is one structures continue then it is x t minus 1, x t minus 2, x t minus 2 it will continue. So, this is one type of situations. If this game boundary is this side then it is called as a univariate time series modeling and this is this is called as a univariate time series modeling, but when we will integrate this two this is called as a multivariate time series modeling. So, now there are lots of techniques under multivariate time series modeling. So, one is called as a cointegrations. So, another is called as a causality that that is the causality causality. Okay. So, our main uh, today's discussion is with respect to this cointegrations and causality. So, what is uh, what is all about the cointegration, how to detect it and uh, oh, oh, wha how oh, why it is there and what is its relevance then we will come down to causality. Okay, so, cointegration is the middle way of this time series setting. So, the initial setup is unity root, then end setup is causality, in between cointegration will play a middle role. Okay. So, it is just like a middle order batsman. So, now we have to see how cointegration will give you signal for the causality. So, it will give you it will give you means it will indicate that there is a long run association between these two variables. So, that means, if there is a cointegration of course, by definition you can say that there is a association between these two variables that too in the long runs. And if it is it will give you only the long run association between these two variables, but it will not give you the indication of direction of causality, where uh, because uh, time series modeling one of the major objective is to detect the direction of causality. Uh, a which is a special feature of time series modeling, which is not available in the case of cross sectional set setting, where uh, the causality is one way. Here we have two way causality, there is a possibility of two way causality. So, that is why, because it is all about time series setting. So, we first know what is the cointegration conda. Okay. So, cointegration means the existence of long run, uh, long run equilibrium relationship between two or more time series variables. Okay. So, that is very important time series variables. Okay. So, now like unit root, like unit root techniques are uh, many techniques are there cointegration techniques, cointegrations, cointegration techniques like like you know uh, uh, like a uh, unit root cointegration techniques are also multiple in nature, but there are two standard forms of uh, cointegration technique. One is called as a easy test, easy technique, te technique and another is called as a JJ technique. Okay. So, this is called as a angle Granger integration technique and this is called as a Johansson and this is cointegration technique. Okay. This is much simpler, easy to understand, easy to calculate, this is too complex, difficult to calculate and it is too much time taking. Okay. It is very easy to handle, this cannot be easy to handle. Okay. With uh, means uh, easy to handle means it is manually it is very easy to, it is not so easy to handle when the setup is very 
a complicated, so, but it is more advanced, more accurate, more reliable and you know more useful in fact. So, we start with the process of easy technique then, then you will converge to Johnson technique. Okay. So, Johnson technique generally when you will use softwares, it is better to use Johnson technique rather than easy test okay. and the problem if you know just like you know in the optimization problem we have graphic techniques and uh, algebraic techniques. So, here also same things. Uh, so, if uh, the variable set, uh, problem setup is with respect to two variable only then simply you can uh, apply the angle Granger test. In fact, it can be also Johnson uh, Granger test. In fact, uh, 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 you can also apply Johnson this this test, but uh, 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 Engel and Granger's test is very much useful for the two variable setting. So, how, what is the test procedure here? The one of the condition for this set test is that there must be two variables say x t and y t. Okay, this uh, you know this Engel and Granger's uh, they have de de defined uh, the possibility of you know co convergence between these two. So, that convergence is called as a co integration. So, they, they are very, they are you know, they got Nobel Prize for this particular techniques and they are very, they are very uh, intelligent and basically they are statisticians. They have developed a very beautiful setting in the time series problems to know the existence of long run equilibrium relationship between two variables. Okay. So, uh, basically, it has a three standard steps. Okay. First step is let us say there are two variables x t and y t. So, now if you have x t and y t, so then obviously, so you like to know x t, is there any relationship between x and y t. So, that is our uh, target. Obviously, you have to first find out the tessonality issue here, you also find out the tessonality issue here. Okay. So, this is your first job. So, once you have the tessonality issue, then come down to existence of co integration. So, it will give you once uh, you know the order of integration, it will give you signal how you have to handle the co integration technique. Okay. So, that means, it will give you a signal that there may be possibility of uh, long run equilibrium. So, but it will not give you positive signal that there is a long run uh, long run uh, relationship. So, for that you have to apply the co integration technique. So, this easy test basically uh, give you uh, means it, it, it consists of three steps altogether. So, First step is uh, two variables must be integrated of same orders. Okay, so two variables, two variables must be integrated of integrated of same order. Okay, preferably, preferably like this x t x t integrated of order one and y t integrated of order one. Okay. So, this is this is the first condition of the co integration technique for uh, that two easy under easy test. So, two variables must be integrated of same orders. Okay. So, let us assume that they that means uh, they are stationary at the at the first difference levels, okay, at the first difference level. So, now x t is in, uh, x t is integrated of order 1 y t is integrated of order 1. So, let us assume that they are integrated of order 1 only. So, then you can come to next step only. If they are not a mismatch, if there is a mismatch between the order of integration, then easy technique will not easy uh, help you to detect the co integration means existence of long run equilibrium relationship. So, what you have to do in the if once it is satisfied, then you come down to second step. Second step uh, is to establish the existence of to establish the linear relationship between the two variables. That means, so y t equal to alpha plus beta x t plus u t. Okay, then or else x t equal to alpha plus beta y t plus u t. Okay, so there must be linear association linear association between between x t and y t. So, the, so we, we, we trust there is a linear relationship between these two and beta needs to be significant, beta needs to be significant. Okay. So, first condition is that variables must be integrated of order 1 and second condition is that, uh, uh, so there must be a linear relationship between these two. Then third conditions, once you have linear relationship, then you will find the error terms. Okay you will find the estimated error terms. Okay. So, now we have to move to the third condition that error term should be stationary in nature. So, the error con or obtained error term must be 
further stationary in nature. Okay. So, obtains, uh, uh, obtains uh, error term must be stationary in nature and for that, so you again apply D F statistics or A D F statistics. Okay. So, that means, you see there are three condition altogether, first condition x t x t follows 1 1, y t follows 1 1, okay. second x t as a function of y t or uh, uh, there is a li linear relationship between x and y, okay, u t. Let us assume that the linear relationship is here like this, beta should be significant. Then third conditions you had the u t heads, then fourth head u t head should be stationary in nature, okay. it should be integrated of order 1 or 0, okay. it should be stationary in nature. So, for that you have to apply decupular test or augmented decupular test. Okay. So, once you apply decupular test, then the statistic will be like this delta y t equal to you can say mu u t minus 1 plus epsilon t or this is d f d f test okay decupular test and or you can apply delta y t equal to mu u t minus 1 plus summation lambda i delta u t minus i i equal to 1 to n plus you can say b t this is ADP test, this is ADP test, okay. this is ADP test. So, now uh, I of course, this has to be statistically significant, okay. this has to be statistically significant, so that it will be stationary in nature. So, that means, all the, the, these are all you can say procedural measures for checking the coin existence of cointegration between x t and y t, provided x t and y t are a uh, integrated of same order that to here 1 1. Okay. So, that means, they are integrated of order uh, order 1 only. So, now we will see if there are two variables and we are assuming that both the variables should be integrated of order 1. If not, then what are the problems? So, it will means if there are two variables. So, far as the order of integration is concerned, then we may have four different situations. So, we may so, not may it, it, there is always four different possibilities. Okay. There are four different possibilities. Okay. See case 1. The case 1 is it if you see y t is integrated of order 1 and x t x t is integrated of order 0. Okay. In that case, in that case u t will be integrated of order 1, integrated of order 1. Okay and here x t and y t are not co-integrated are not co-integrated. Okay. This is case 1. Case 2, if you know y t integrated of order 1 and x t integrated of uh, x t integrated of order 1, okay, then u t will be integrated of order 0. Okay. So, in that case x t and y t are co-integrated are co-integrated. Okay. Case 3, case 3 if y t integrated of 0 order 0 and x t integrated of order 1 1 then u t will be integrated of order 1. Okay integrated of order 1. In that case, x t and y t are not co-integrated. Okay. Case 4, okay. case 4, if x t integrated of order 0 okay, and y t integrated of order 0, then u t must be integrated of order, integrated of order, order 0, uh, sorry, it, it is inti uh, integrated of order uh, 0, of course, integrated of order 0, okay. then x t and y t, x t and y t, x t and y t are, are uh, means co-integration, uh, uh, here that means, 
here there is a no such co integration, there is a co integration cannot be possible, it is better to write co integration, co integration cannot be possible here. Okay, this is all about this is all about the easy test. Okay, so uh, Engel Granger test follows four different steps. So that means if there must be two variables in the systems, at least two variables in the systems, and both must have a same order of integrations, and there must be linear relationship between the two. Then obtain error term must be stationary in nature that to by either applying a df test and a dp test there is also uh, uh, take uh, you know item called as a crdw co integrating regression darwin version statistics so you know we have discussed autocorrelation problem so same thing here so we once the order of integrations are same then we will go for co integrating equations so that means they they must have linear relationship so, you know in that case when you will uh, estimate that co integration equation you will find there will be Darwin Watson statistic again you check the like autocorrelation whether that very particular statistic is statistically significant or not if it is so then there is a co integration so otherwise it is not a co integration so, ok. So, this is how you have to go for this uh, you know co uh, checking the co integration test. Another advanced test is called as a Johnson and Gisulius uh, test, JJ test. Okay. Basically, this test deals with two statistics. One is called as a trust statistics, trust statistics, trust statistics. Okay. Another is called as a maximum eigen, eigen value, eigen value statistics. Okay this is basically denoted as a lambda max sorry lambda truss okay which is equal to minus t summations log 1 minus lambda i head i i equal to r plus 1 to n okay similarly maximum eigen value we will write alpha max a equal to minus t log 1 minus uh, lambda head r plus 1 okay which is followed by the two equations x t equal to a 0 plus summation a i x t minus i plus epsilon t okay i equal to 1 to n okay this can be rewritten as a delta x t is equal to a 0 a 0 plus uh, you know product x t minus p okay plus summation i equal to 1 to p minus 1 uh, p minus 1 a i a i uh, uh, delta x t minus i plus u t okay so wh while uh, while 1 minus lambda 1 uh, pi 1 minus pi 2 minus pi n okay k equal to 1 to up to p and pi equal to 1 minus pi 1 minus pi 2 minus pi n ok. So, obviously this is nothing but alpha plus beta coefficient alpha plus beta coefficient ok. So, this is how these are all uh, de derivations. So, I am not going to derive all these uh, details here because it will take lots of time. So, it is not possible to derive all these detail with limited uh, uh, lectures. So, what I will say, uh, suggest you, so for uh, Johnson and Gisulius test, so you have to just pick up two statistics, trust statistic and maximum eigen values. So, we have a tabulated value, uh, means uh, we have a critical value. So, with the basis of critical value, you have to compare the uh, calculated value of trust statistics, lambda trust and the lambda max maximum eigen value statistics. Then, we like to know. Uh, it is actually matrix format. So, with the help of it is eigen value eigen matrix. So, it will give you signal how many uh, how many co integrating vectors are there, whether they are, there is any co integrations that means, uh, if the statistic is significant it will give you uh, hint that there is a co integration. So, now how many co integrations are there depending upon the number of variables involvement 
and after suppose there are two, vari uh, two variables uh, involvement and uh, then obviously, there is only one cointegration equations, uh, uh, two cointegration x t y t y t x t. Uh, similarly, if there are multiple numbers, so you have to find out how many possibilities you have cointegrating variables and accordingly you have to justify what are the number of cointegrations. So, that will give you signal of you know long run equilibrium relationship between two or more variables. So, that, that is nothing but you can say cointegration technique. Okay. So, now <coughs> cointegration will give you the signal uh, whether whether there is existence of long run equilibrium relationship between two, two or more variables. So, now uh, once it will give you detection uh, uh, whether uh, the variables are in uh, you know exist uh, whether there is existence of long run equilibrium relationship between the two variables or more. So, it will not give you the signal of the direction of causality that means, whether all these variables are influencing a single variables or all these variables are interdependent to each other. So, that means, you see I in the very beginning I have mentioned. So, these three statistics are very integrated to each other that means, unit root problem, cointegration problem and causality problem. So, unit root test will give you signal to go for cointegration, cointegration will give you signals green, green signal to the causality issue. Ultimately, we like to know what is the direction of causality of this particular problem. Okay. So, now, so what we will do here? So, we will discuss the causality problems. Okay. So, now, the next problems we highlight is the causality problem. Okay. So, now, uh, causality means it will be give, means long run uh, existence of cointegration only automatically give a signal that there is a causality but that that is not uh, that is essential or necessary condition but it is not sufficient condition for sufficient condition you have to go for causality test and Grang, this, this is how granger is very famous so uh, c w granger has a developed test according to his uh, according to his name it's known as a gc test okay granger causality test so we have to go for granger causality test to check whether there is a, a direction of causality if it is so whether it is a a in a, a one in directional causality and or bidirectional causality. That means there are uh, of of course when we move to cointegration, then the system will be itself multivariate. Okay, it is not univariate like you know in the case of unit unit root test. So moment you are in the cointegration, then the system will be multivariate. Then obviously there is a possibility of causality. Then when there is a possibility of causality, there are three different uh, uh, you know uh, outcomes you may get. So, there may be no causality between the between the two or more variables and there may be unidirectional causality and there may be bidirectional causality. So, let me highlight what is all about this causality issue. For instance, let us start with the x and y. Okay. So, that means, if x causes y, okay, x causes y and y does not cause x, okay, x causes y, y does not x causes so, this is called as a unidirectional causality, okay. Unidirectional causality that means causality is a three forms no causality, no causality, unidirectional causality, then bidirectional causality, okay. Bidirectional causality. So, now with two variables x and y, we start with very simple models, then we will go for uh, you can extend to multivariate models. So, uh, like you know there is a concept called as a vector autoregressive model and vector error correction models. Okay. So, once you will attach with these systems then we can able to know what is vector error correction model uh, vector uh, uh, and var model vector autoregressive model. So, second second uh, case is y influence x and uh, x uh, y influence x and x does not influence y. Okay, this is called also unidirectional causality. This is called as unidirectional causality from y to x. Okay, so this is unidirectional causality from x to y. Okay, but reverse causality is not there. Okay, so third case is uh, this is third case is y causes x and x causes y. Okay, so this is called as a bidirectional causality. Bidirectional causality. So that means y and x both causes each other. Okay. Then fourth case, fourth possibility is y does not cause x and x does not does not cause y. Okay. X does not cause y. Okay. So this is uh, uh, if this is the case, 
So, then there is a called as a this interpretation is a no causality, no causality between y t and x t, okay, x t or y t. So, that means for a particular systems having two variables a together, so there are three different shapes, in fact, four different shapes, uh, unidirection uh, no causality that means, if x does not cause y, y does not cause x. Unidirectional causality means, x causes y, then x I mean in the other side y does not influence x, then other unidirectional causality is y causes x, but reverse is not true. Then final is x causes y and y causes x, okay. so this is called as a bidirectional causality. So, we, we have to uh, means, uh, co-interaction will give you that there is a possibility of causality, but it will not give you the indication of direction of causality. That means, whether there is a really any causality or if it is so, whether it is a unidirectional problem or it is a bidirectional problem. That is our main agenda of this causality, Granger causality test. Okay. So, now how you have to detect all these things? There is a technical procedure how you have to do all these things. So, let us say start with the y t and x t. So, how do you check the Ganger causality test? So, oh, I, will, I will directly prepare a model here. So, to check the Ganger causality test. So, we, we start with the y t equal to alpha 0 plus summation beta i x t minus i i equal to 1 to n plus summation gamma j y t minus j j equal to 1 to n plus u t. You know, uh, this is oh, one model so, which you have to use. This is called as a auto regressive model. So, as I have mentioned earlier, so the, uh, the divisions of models may be distributive log models, may be auto regressive log models, but the application of auto regressive model is much higher than the distributive log models. In fact, there is a way how to transfer this distributive log model to auto regressive log model. So, with this particular setups, y t and x t, so we need to know whether y causes x or x causes y. So, now in this particular equation, the moment I will write like this way, so it will give you signal. So, here means give you signal or our aim is it to know whether it is x t will influence the y t. Okay. So, it is better uh, uh, we start with here y t, no? that, that means you start with here y t minus i, then it is x t minus j. Okay. So, that means this particular equation give you signal whether x t influence y t only. Okay. Similarly, we should know whether y t influence x, x, uh, x t. So, that means for that we need to have another equations. So, alpha 0 plus summation uh, you know uh, mu uh, mu uh, i mu i x t minus i i equal to 1 to n okay, plus uh, summation delta j uh, delta j y t minus j j equal to 1 to n plus u t. Okay. So, then this particular equation will give you signal whether y t influence x t. Okay. So, now once this is the case, then our null hypothesis is that these are these are the these coefficients should at least one of the coefficients should not be equal to 0. So, that means this parameter should be statistical significant. When this is your task, then obviously this delta j parameter at least one of the delta j parameter is should not equal to 0. Okay, this is our uh, standard null hypothesis. So, now uh, 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 here uh, we, we are now targeting to check whether x t influence y t and uh, here we are targeting to check whether y t influence x t. So, now uh, with two, uh, two variables in the system, so we have to set two equations. Okay. So, similarly, if there are three variables in the system, we will put three a different variables. Okay. So, three different equations. If it is four variables in the system, then we will apply for different equations. Okay. So, we like to know every time so what are the other variables, uh, uh, whether causes other way, uh, first variable or second variable, third variable or fourth variables. Okay. But when the system involves more more and more number of variables, it is very difficult to handle uh, manually. In that case, you have to apply the bar model vector auto regressive model. All right. So, now uh, let us assume that with a simple problems y t and x t means the system should involve only two variables y t and x t. So, we like to know how is the uh, procedure to check the causality issue here. So, right. 
So, now uh, the standard procedures let us uh, we start with y t equal to alpha 0 plus summation alpha i uh, y t minus i i equal to 1 to n okay, plus summation beta j uh, beta j uh, x t minus j x t minus j j equal to 1 to n plus u t. Okay. So, let us say this is our equation. So, that means here our agenda is to know whether x t influence y t. Okay. So, uh, all together there are three steps here. Okay. So, like co-integration. So, uh, easy co-integration test. So, uh, it has a three different steps. So, first test is uh, step 1 so means first step is there are three steps. First step, uh, step 1 step 1 is to have a equation like this y t equal to alpha 0 plus summation alpha i y t minus i okay, purely autoregressive model y t minus i okay, then plus u t. Then you regress all these uh, models uh, means all the uh, all these uh, regress these models then you have residual sum obtain the residual sum squares uh, RSS that we will call it RSSR residual restricted residual sum squares. Okay, this is called as a restricted res, restricted residual residual sum squares residual sum squares. Okay, restricted uh, 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 residuals uh, res, uh, residual uh, restricted residual sum squares. Okay, RSS RSS. Okay, so similarly. Stay, go to step 2. Okay. So, you fit the equation like this y t equal to alpha 0 plus summation alpha uh, alpha i y t minus i i equal to 1 to n plus summation gamma j gamma j x t minus x t minus j j equal to 1 to n plus b t. Then you ha again have again have a residual sum squares that we will call is e unrestricted okay this is called as a unrestricted unrestricted uh, uh, unrestricted rss okay residual sum squares so step 1 is to have residual sum squares restricted residual sum squares so that is nothing but uh, to regress uh, yt with yt minus i only okay so then obtain the residual sum square and call it a restricted residual sum square then second you regress the full models then you have the residual sum squares and that residual sum square you have uh, you name is the unrestricted residual sum squares okay so now in the step 3 so you integrate this uh, this and this okay so how you have to integrate for that you have to apply f statistics so f statistic is nothing but rss r minus rss u r okay divided by m all divided by rss u r divided by n minus k m represents here m represents log length okay log length okay log length k represents number of parameters in the systems and n represents sample size n represents sample size okay f, so now you get the f statistics here so now if f is significant that means this is calculated value of f and uh, you have a tabulated value f provided with this degrees of freedom so once uh, you uh, you find that f is statistically significant then you will conclude here uh, xt causes xt causes yt okay xt causes yt again for you know uh, uh, again for you know a reverse causality you fit the equation similar way uh, uh, you know in this uh, in this you know uh, uh, for reverse causality you fit the equation x t equal to uh, alpha plus summation uh, beta i a x t minus i i equal to 1 to n plus summation gamma j y t minus j j equal to 1 to n plus b t. Okay. So, again you have to follow the step 1, step 2, step 3, okay. step 3, step 2, step 1. So, that you will get R S S R you will get rss ur and you will get f statistic which is a function of rss r rss ur divided uh, from uh, followed by num log length 
um, sample size and degrees of freedom. Okay. So, this is how you have to calculate the F statistics. So, now if by any chance it is significant, then you will call as x influence x. Okay. So, now in the first case we have checked x influence y and here we are checking y influence x. Now, you compare here. Okay. So, if it is true, if it is true, then it is called as a bidirectional causality. If this is true, this is not true, then it is called as a unidirectional causality. This is true, this is not true, then this is called as again unidirectional causality. This is not true, this is not true, then this is called as a no causality. Okay. So, these are the four outcomes we have to find in the case of in the case of in the case of you know Granger causality. Here one of the standard tricks is that because before this is simple Granger causality test. So, here one of the standard assumption is that x t x t should be integrated of order 1 y t should be integrated of order 1s. Okay. x t integrated of order 1s y t integrated of order 1s. So, this is how we have checked through unit root test unit root test this is how we have check through unit root test and similarly uh, next step we know what is the x t and y t relationship co integrations okay so then we like to know in the third this is co integration technique then this is you know th in the third we have a ranger causality test that to you know whether x t y t are causing each others both are causing each other or no causality each other. So, okay, this is how you have to proceed uh, here for checking the Granger causality test. Okay. So, now Granger causality has some advanced versions also. Okay. So, it has some advanced versions. So, model 2 this is what we have discussed uh, is let us say model 1. Model 1 what is the condition? X t is followed by 1 1 uh, order of integration 1 and y t is the order of integration 1. Okay. So, then you apply the what we have already discussed, but uh, there may be other forms of model. So, I can write like this way. So, delta y t is equal to alpha 0 plus summation alpha i delta y t minus i okay, i equal to 1 to n okay, plus summation beta j delta uh, x t minus j t minus t minus j ok uh, j equal to 1 to n plus delta e c t delta e c t plus u t ok. This this can be uh, one model and another model I will call it delta x t which is nothing but let us say beta 0 plus summation beta i delta x t minus i i equal to 1 to n plus summation mu j delta y t minus j j equal to 1 to n plus this I will call it delta 1 this I will call it delta 2 e c 2 e c t plus b t. Okay. So, this is another form of the models. So, the, this particular structure will give you signal whether uh, x t causes y t. Okay. This will give you signal whether y t causes x t okay. and this will give you long run impact, long run impact and these are all give you short run impact. Okay. Short run impact. So, that means, uh, uh, once, uh, once you check the unit root component, then obviously, it will give you the order of integration. So, by the help of order of integration, you get to know what type of models further you have to use for co integrations and causality. So, once you have order of integration, it will give you signal of uh, how to check the co integrations and how to check the causality. So, the moment you will get the variables, means you get the information about the tensionality issue then obviously, you have to enter the co-integration because it has already given the signal that there may be long run equilibrium relationship and for that you have to apply a co-integration technique. So, once you apply the co-integration technique, then obviously, if it is there, then obviously, it will give you the signal to the Granger causality test. Okay. That means, existence of causality. So, for that we need to apply the Granger causality test then once you apply the Granger causality test, it will give you signal whether uh, 
uh, whether there is a really causality or not. If it is causality, then whether it is unidirectional causality or bidirectional causality or no causality at all. So, uh, th this way you have to uh, you know calculate the entire issue or you want to you can explore how to check the causality issue. The thing is here is you remember here is this particular ECT here is ECT stands for error correction terms error correction terms here is here is uh, the standard format is the variables are co integrated, but we are using 1 0 uh, 1 0 data ok. So, that means uh, uh, it is a integrated of order 0 ok integrated of order 0. So, uh, that that data you have to use to justify the causality that means how to get this ECT other items are always available. So, you have to just apply the first difference and you, uh, you can get through, but in the case of ECT it is not available directly. So, you have to get through it. For instance, how do you get ACT? You know, because once the variables are integrated co uh, stationarity, then you have to check the co integration. So, for that you need to uh, you need to know whether there is any linear relationship between the two that is you know uh, y t y t uh, as a function of x t function of x t then or x t as a function of y t. So, obviously there is error term u t and there is error term u t. Okay. So, the moment you will get the error term so, that error terms uh, once you get the error term that error term will be considered as a error correction term again it has to be ins uh, insert in a particular mod uh, in a particular equation then you have to check the impact of ECT on this particular variable at the first difference levels. So, if it is so then obviously, so we can get to know whether means here uh, in this particular format. So, you have two different objectives, first objective is the direction of causality and second objective is the short run impact and long run impact. Okay. So, some of the it is very essential because it is a time series model altogether. So, we have a short run interval and we have the long run intervals. Okay. So, now according to this setup, so we can check the structures and you can get to know the results. Okay. So, uh, this is a, this is this particular structure we can call it a, a model 2. Okay. So, there is a another models uh, another model. So, we can write like this way model 3 model 3 g. So, I can simply write delta y t equal to alpha plus summation alpha i delta y t minus i okay, i equal to 1 to n plus summation beta j delta y t minus j j equal to 1 to n plus u t. Okay. So, this is an one equation and another equation I will call it delta x t equal to alpha plus uh, this is I will call it alpha 1 this is call it alpha 2 then I will call it mu i delta x t minus i okay. i equal to 1 to n plus summation you can say uh, alpha beta gamma ok let us put gamma here then uh, then uh, this is y t minus j so this should be x t minus j ok this is x t minus j and this is x t minus i then gamma j y t minus j ok y t minus j of course delta is here ok delta is here then j equal to 1 to n plus b t. Okay, this is another models. This is another models where we are using one one data here, one one data. So now, if this is if in this particular models, our aim is to check whether uh, it is a, a, a whether it is a x causes y. Okay, it is causes a x causes y, and this particular uh, uh, yes, this uh, this will give you the signal x causes y and this will give you signals y causes x ok y causes x. So, that means if both are true then it is called as a bidirectional causality if only one true others are not there. So, in that case it is called as a unidirectional causality uh, 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 either this correct and this not correct or uh, this not correct this is correct it is called as a unidirectional causality if both are rejected then it is called as a non direction no causality.
no causality okay both are rejected then no it's question of no causality okay so this is uh, this is uh, all together the structure of causality test so what we have learned uh, in the couple of lectures so major issue of time series pro major problems in the time series molding is the unit root problem co integration problem and causality problem so you need to uh, give you signal to know the stationarity or order of integration of a particular uh, variables and that to that is very uh, important and very much useful particular in the financial time series then with the help of a uh, unit root test then we have to move to the co integration co integration technique will give you signal about the existence of long run or uh, yes long run relationship between two or more variables uh, so once you get to know uh, the uh, existence of long run relationship then obviously you can able to proceed to check the causality so direction of causality okay because unit root will give you green signal to the co integration but it will not give you indication whether there is a long run association uh, therefore as a result you have to go for again co integration technique like eg test and uh, jj test johnson test okay so uh, if uh, if you get through the co integration results that means if there is a possibility of long run association then uh, it will give you signal that there is a causality but it will not give you the signal whether uh, it is unidirectional causality or bidirectional causality or no causality at all okay so in that case you have to go for granger causality test with a different model setup with the help of different structure different setup you have to pick up a particular form of the model then end of the day you have to check whether there is any uh, kind of causality if there is a causality then uh, uh, whether it is unidirectional causality or bidirectional causality okay so with this we can conclude this particular sessions have a nice day thank you very much